Welcome back to TV5 News at 9. It's National Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and today we highlight resources right here in mid-Michigan. Joining us this morning, we have sexual assault nurse examiner Kirsten Huntgrass, and then we also have Allison Dacos from the Child and Family Sexual Assault Center. Ladies, thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having yes, us. Thank yes. You. All right, so Allison, tell us, uh, remind us what Michigan Forensic Examiners is and what the service helps to provide. Sure, so I'm actually going to hand that one to okay. Kirsten since yeah. she is the nurse and works at MFE. Okay. <laughs> so Michigan Forensic Examiners um, is started by our boss, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. She is a forensic nurse examiner and what we are is saying, so sexual assault nurse examiners, um, and we go to the hospitals or any location where a victim of sexual assault would need care mm -hmm. within a time frame for evidence collection or 120 hours. And there is a Child and Family Sexual Assault Center. Ladies, tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So the Sexual Assault Center is a branch of Child and Family Services. Mm -hmm. We offer support to victims uh, in a few different ways. So the part that we are most involved in, the two of us, is crisis intervention. So immediately following an assault or if someone is struggling, they can call our 24-hour hotline or they can present for an exam and we mm -hmm. will send an advocate to be with them um, and coordinate with the nurses. And then also we have a legal advocate who can walk through the legal system with victims as well as clinicians who can offer um, counseling and therapy to people for long-term healing. All of our services are completely free, which is incredible for folks. Yeah. And they are available not only to the primary victim, but to the friends and family of that person. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So this question will be for both of you ladies. Uh, we can start with you first, Kirsten. So why is it so important to bring awareness to the issue of uh, sexual assault and just sexual assault awareness month? Most cases of sexual assault don't even get reported to police in the first place. And it is a vicious, violent crime um, and should be reported. And part of our job and awareness is to get people to understand what all is included in it. Some people don't even understand what consent necessarily would be. So we want to educate and spread the word and let them know we're trying to get rid of that stigma. Mm -hmm. We want you to know we are here for you to help you. We come right to you. And like Allison said, it is a free service to them. And we help you along the way. And we're just trying to educate the community, law enforcement, everybody around mm -hmm. so that it's better reported. And hopefully we can decrease. And it'd be great if it would just end all together. Yeah. And Allison, tell us, why do you think this is uh, a topic that is so important that we need to really raise awareness? Violent crime of any type, but especially sexual assault that takes away a person's uh, dignity and autonomy in this way can have a lifelong impact on people. Mm -hmm. There are resources that exist and we want folks to know about them and to, to utilize them to help along a healing journey. Mm -hmm. People who seek services are more likely to, um, to start that healing process sooner and to have mm -hmm. better outcomes. The worst case scenario is that experiencing a trauma of some sort will then escalate into other problems in life yeah. and so it's just so important that people know these services exist mm -hmm. they know that we're here and that we want to help them um, and that that they get the help that they need to be able to heal and move forward yeah and what else do you hope that people take away from sexual assault awareness month outside of knowing that these services exist what else do you guys want people to know don't be afraid to speak up mm -hmm. if you see something that's not appropriate or you're noticing a pattern do not be afraid to stick up and to help others because somebody else may not be aware of what is occurring. There's things such as grooming. Some people may not understand what's happening. Somebody else might notice like, hey, this doesn't seem appropriate mm -hmm. and to speak up and to hopefully end the violence. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Allison? People need to know that they aren't alone. Mm -hmm. Anything like this can be extremely isolating, but so many of mm -hmm. us experience this at some point in our life or we have a loved one who does and if we never talk about it then other people don't know and that cycle of isolation continues mm -hmm. so to break the stigma for folks to be able to talk about their experiences can be incredibly helpful yeah and this is such a important topic and a massive issue uh, in our society what actions can people take if they want to make a difference and they want to help what can people do there are lots of fundraising opportunities 
um, that occur year-round for different organizations that help people. Um, Michigan Forensic Examiners, for example, the company I work with, Underground Railroad, mm -hmm. um, the Advocacy Center, mm -hmm. they can they can assist by donating, they can do many things to help yeah. with the community and even like today is Denim Day, so mm -hmm. it's a day that was started back in 1999 to support women and to kind of protest an uh, overturned case from a girl wearing jeans that were tight, that happened in Italy. But by wearing jeans, just standing together just to show support for yeah. victims of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. What about you, mm -hmm. Allison? Uh, can you repeat the question for yes, me? Yes, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. So Her answer was so great, I was listening. <laughs> <It> was. <laughs> uh, so what are some things that people can do if they want to make a difference yes. and they want to help people who may have been impacted, what should they do? Thank you, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing you can do is educate yourself yeah. and educate yourself using resources that are reliable and trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So the Sexual Assault Center, Child and Family Services, our website has a lot of great information mm -hmm. on it, but so do um, other resources like rain.org is a wonderful resource. Um, you can go to michigan.gov to learn about what is located around you, what resources there are. That is the number one way that people can help. Yeah. And then for folks who want to be more hands-on, who are um, looking for a bigger way to volunteer, many of our advocates through the Sexual Assault Center, so the people who go and sit with a victim and comfort them during an exam, are volunteers. Mm -hmm. And if that is something folks are interested in, they can call Child and Family Services, and I would be thrilled to talk with you about it. <laughs> and we only have a couple of seconds left, mm -hmm. so left really quick. What makes you ladies so passionate about what you do? Sexual assault to me is one of the most heinous things that can happen to somebody. It mm -hmm. literally takes mm -hmm. away your self-preservation. Somebody took your control away from you, and I just want to be a step in helping them heal and get that back. And just helping in a way because we collect evidence then also trying to incorporate the entire justice system into it also. That's awesome. Well, ladies, we thank you so much for the work that you're doing in our communities and the difference that you're making. Thank you. Thank yes, you so much course. for having us. Yes, of course. All right, so you can find more information on this topic for Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the Michigan Examiners. You can find that in the hot link section of our website, WNEM.com.